In this episode, we discuss why so many parts interchange between the different years of 4-liter motors, as well as some of the engineering challenges and achievements. I'll just give you a little history. So I, you know, went through the forum here, and a bunch of people reached out directly, and you know, they have a bunch of different questions. We're a little more specific, and some of them focused on performance. Some of them yeah. I might be able to answer, and some I may not. I don't know. We'll see. That's perfectly fine. If you can't answer it, just tell me. These are just the okay. things that people want to know. Uh, a few people want to know how is it that all the 4.2 accessories and all the 4-liter uh, accessories bolt on? Is this designed? so that these things are swappable yes. or? It's called commonization. You say, okay, we're gonna build a clean sheet of paper, four liter engine, inline six, and then they start commonizing. Well, well, mm -hmm. you should do it this way, so that way we can put this crank in the four liter and make a 4.5 liter or whatever you want. You know, and, and you know, and then they, we said, well, we can't do anything about the 258 because we wanna to go to a 388 bore. And right. the, the 4.2 is a 375 bore but we can use the crank, so we'll commonize the crank. And then they use a block, but the head is completely different because the water passages don't line up, and but the bowl holes line up. That's the right. odd thing. The bowl holes line up, but the water passages don't line up. So if you put a 258 head, which you would never do anyway, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it, onto a four liter, you're gonna have to plug some of these holes because right. you'll have water spurting out of the <laughs> but, so, so I don't know, did I answer did I answer the question or did I oh, uh, for sure. kind of yeah, got yeah. all up, got crazy? We got a lot of patient guys that are going to really love this information anyway. Maybe talk a little bit about the project as a whole. Like some of the, initially there must have been some real engineering problems. Like you said, when you walked in the door, they didn't have a flow match. <laughs> right. We got so, that settled. What were some of the big problems that you ran into right out of the gate and uh, maybe some of the major design changes that you pushed through, you know, beyond moving from a 3.8 to a 5.6 valve? You know, I, I was a one-man group, okay? It was tougher for me because I had to always justify my ideas. Mm -hmm. in, other, okay. in other words, when, I would, when, when they would come and say, we don't want you changing this because it works fine, and I would change it, and they'd go, now we got to do all this extra work. And I said, mm -hmm. well, you know, that's what you get paid for. You guys are making a lot of money. So are these, 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 well, if you're a one-man group, it's not engineers. So these must be the guys with the foundry and the guys with the machining. And, um, well, we had all that. We, yeah, we had all that. We had that. Oh, so you did that all out of the same, this is in Michigan? I, you know, I worked, you know, I worked with responsible engineers like one was responsible for the valve train. One was responsible for the head casting. Mm -hmm. You know, one's responsible for the intake manifold, and one's for the exhaust manifold. They, you know, it's all different people that work on different parts of the engine. So anyway, I uh, I try to justify everything that I do. You know, we go into a, a general meeting with you know the all the people that were involved. We would throw ideas around, and well, why are you doing it like this? Right. We need water there. We need water there. You're gonna you're gonna screw it up, and I said, you've got a problem already. The problem's still there. It doesn't matter what I do. It's it's still there. It's something else is wrong with it. Well, they they had valve seat recession real bad on the exhaust seat, and the original heads that they were using were three eighths valves, heavy stuff, and the castings were uh, a little thick around the hmm. around the valve seat area where they needed more water to be. So. The intake wasn't a problem, but the exhaust, you know, it was. It gets to be a problem when you start going down the head. Right. You know, you start going down the head, you know, there's water coming up on one side and there's water going down on the other side, and they're both on the exhaust valves. But in the middle of the head, you know, you got a couple exhaust valves right next to each other, right, right in the middle. You, you're building a lot of heat in there. And I told them, I said, you're going to have to change these gaskets. They go, well, what do you what do you recommend? And I and I tell them, I said, well, maybe you could put some kind of a, a cast diverter, force the water to go through there. And I said, well, we have to cut a head apart and uh, look in there and see what I can do. So I cut a head off, you know, like right through the middle, like the length of it. Like right. if you were looking at the porch, it'd be just like half the porch would be cut in half. And I'd look down in there and I'd say, okay, you know, there's no there's nothing that'll force the water to go through here. I put a, like a rib to try mm -hmm. to force it. I said, which way is the water coming through? Is it coming through the back or is it coming through the front and going across or through the back going across? They said, back. 
I said, okay, here, we'll put a rib right here, put a curve on it so it'll grab the water and throw it right through there. And they said, hey, that ain't a bad idea. We're gonna, what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the top of a head off and we're gonna put a piece of plastic up there and we're gonna build a dummy engine with water flow with the, you know, the pump and everything. We'll just right. drive it with the electric motor and we'll see if the water goes through there. That's I said, great. you know, you know, anytime somebody comes up with a good idea and I think it's better than mine, I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead. In that vein, what do you think was uh, your biggest win? Well, just in general, the four liter engine was a very, very successful engine. Mm -hmm. It was the cheapest engine they had to build. Cheapest the cheapest. The cheapest. Yes. And, and Chrysler, you know, when they bought us in 87, they said, we love this engine. He says, mm. it's got good performance. He said, and it's cheap to build. He said, we're going to keep building, you know, because they were going to stop, I think, in 98. Then they continued on to 2006 yeah. because they said, this engine is so cheap to build, we can't stop building them. He <laughs> said, you know, this thing makes money. We're making a lot of money with this. What so they just, cheap to build? Uh, you know, the castings, you know, uh, for blocks and heads and, you uh, know, commonizing a lot of parts from the original 258 helped mm -hmm. save some money and they were always looking they had a term for it um where they would value engineering they, yeah pretty much yeah that's yeah. you know just trying to find where you can cut maybe hey buy this part instead of that one this one's two cents cheaper and as long as it passes as long as yeah as long as it passes durability they're fine right um, with a light cheap easy to build and actually made decent horsepower for its uh what it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, the finished product, I think, it was 185 horse, which is pretty mm -hmm. decent. That was like a 92. The, the earlier version was like 177, I think. And then it got right. better. It went up to 185. Yeah, I think I saw the HA1 numbers were supposed to be 190. Yeah, we were looking at all kinds of things. Try Y headers. Try Y header can really add a lot of torque to the engine. I've got one on mine right now. It's an OBX, so it's so kind of hard to make to, to really. Make oh, okay, it okay. So, okay, so it's like uh, aftermarket. It's aftermarket. We went to Batten Engineering, and they made headers and stuff. And I knew a lot of the guys that worked there. He was also into racing, so I got to know him pretty good. We had them build us a tri -Y, and we okay. told them what we wanted. We want a complete adjustable tri -Y. We want a a pipe that's like one and a half, one and five eighths, and one and three quarters. Each segment was like that, you know, just, you know, where we could, right. you know, you could build a straight header if you wanted to. We had all these steps, and then we had the, uh, the merge section was like stepped in different sizes, and then we had the collector section was like different sizes, outlets. And we went through, I don't know how many tests on a four liter with that tri -Y. Most of it, doesn't work and I would say 99% of it doesn't work <laughs> and once you hit the combination right ooh, that thing that four liter was make 275 foot bumps of torque and that's just because it's damaging the cylinder so much better oh yeah it was uh, and it was you know tuning with the, the reflected tuning and everything was really picking up the performance the thing is it's got to be made exactly right if it's not right exactly right so they said it's not real practical. They wanted something that would just dump into a collector, bring yeah, it off and into a collector. Manifolds. Yeah, and it was, and all the manifolds were like that. It just came out. It had a little bit of length to them. And I said, well, instead of just you know arbitrarily guessing at the length, I said, I'll tell you how long to make that short putt. That's and I crazy. came up with a, I came up with a number, 15 and a half inches. Mm -hmm. said, well, how'd you figure that out? And I said, this formula right here, area length. He said, where'd you wow. learn that? I said, I read it. In a book. So I, I plugged in the numbers and I said, here, is this where you want peak torque? Okay, boot, 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 boot. And I had, there was a blackboard in one of the engineer's office and I just started writing it out. And he goes, oh, hey, that looks pretty cool. How about making one for us? And I said, all right. Okay. So I made one. I made one. And they put it on the engine, they couldn't believe it. <laughs> they said, holy crap, this works. And they were using that thing until it warped so bad they couldn't use it anymore. You know, mm. Could you build us another one? I thought, I'm building any more of those. I said, you know what it is. You got all the stuff. Go somewhere and see if somebody wants to make it. 
but uh, they decide not to do it because it's going to cost more. They always boil down to that. It's either going to be too hard to make, too hard to fit, or cost more. He said, we want something simple. I said, well, right. I can't get any simpler than this. I said, it's one pipe diameter. I think it was one and five eight. You know, the hard part is you got to you want to make the torque and the horsepower with the tri -wise. You want to be, right. you want both. You know, and we were getting like more torque, and no, the horsepower just killed it. And we were running into that. You start playing with the lengths, all these different segments, you know, you know, it got to be a nightmare. And one day I said, well, we, we haven't tried that yet. The dyno operator says, yeah, okay. So we tried that and he says, hey, the power's getting closer. The torque's still up there and then the power's closer. Let's play with the length of it. So we changed the length of it. And then, you know, it started to, it started to match and then it actually went past peak horsepower. But the bad thing is, see, you've got a bolt of exhaust system on there. We were responsible for the exhaust system. You know, yeah. the guys in the exhaust lab, they don't flow anything. They, they, right. buy the, they buy different mufflers and exhaust pipes. They put them on a car, and then they take them to the test track, and they go out there and run them to see, you know, how the car performed with the different uh, systems and stuff. After they found what worked the best, they had to rerun it for, for noise to see if it, right. it was higher than the federal right. noise regulation. It was a, you know, it's a nightmare, you know, working on all that kind of stuff, you know, and keeping that, you know, keep that organized in your mind all the time of what's going on. You got to keep keep up with the rules changes. They make new rules, new rules, new rules, new rules.